Welcome to Community Journalism, Basic Principles for Effective Storytelling. In this course, we will take a look at ways that citizens can become more responsible, ethical, and effective communicators of news and information in their communities by understanding the basic principles of journalism. We will look at how to craft stories that make a positive contribution, and we will examine how to create synergy between the medium and your message. This lesson is Creating Your Stories. The lesson was written by R. Allen Berry, a media literacy educator, advocate, and researcher. In this lesson, we will examine the differences between telling stories and sharing information. We will look at the ways that traditional news stories and community stories differ. And we will examine best practices for telling stories that matter to your community. Alan Berry is currently pursuing a PhD at the University of Maine. His research interests include media literacy education, critical pedagogy, media ecology, cinema studies, and the cultural critique of news and advertising. He has a master's degree in media studies and a bachelor's degree in film production. Alan is the Maine State Chapter Leader for Media Literacy Now and the former education director of The Lamp an organization empowering people of all ages to live, learn, and create with media and technology. He is also a former Fulbright Research Scholar, Kosovo 2018, and Peace Corps Volunteer, Mali, 2006 to 2008. Alan begins with the story of a young woman who witnessed one of the most infamous events in recent U.S. history. On May 25, 2020, teenager Darnella Frazier was walking through her Minneapolis neighborhood when she saw police officers making an arrest. As she approached to get a closer look, she witnessed one of the police officers kneeling on the neck of an African-American man and could hear the man pleading for his life. Darnella took out her cell phone and began recording. She then uploaded the 10-minute long video to Facebook. Within hours, hundreds of thousands of people around the world had viewed Darnella's video of George Floyd being killed by police officers. One of the most important news stories of the 21st century had been captured and shared by a courageous teenager with a cell phone, a Facebook account, and a sense of civic responsibility. The world needed to see what I was seeing, Darnella told the Minnesota Star Tribune. Stuff like this happens in silence too many times. Citizens like Darnella Frazier, who witness an injustice and feel compelled to share it with others, exist in communities around the world. With access to digital media technologies and social media platforms, any citizen now has the opportunity to create and share news with the potential to reach audiences both local and global. People who were historically only the consumers of news now have the tools to be the producers of news, to be community journalists. Creating and sharing information online alone does not make someone a community journalist. Community journalism requires more than just a cell phone and a social media account. Community journalism requires an understanding of the difference between news and information. It requires the ability to tell stories, but also a sense of responsibility to the people in your community to tell their stories honestly and ethically in a way that reflects their reality and their experiences. It requires the courage to confront power, and it means using the tools of media production and distribution to empower your community and give voice to those who are too often overlooked or misrepresented. News versus information. We live in a saturated media environment in which we often feel like we are drowning in information. Of course, we all contribute to this cascade of information through our social media posts, 
our comments, our likes, and our retweets. But what is the value of sharing information online? And what is the difference between information and news? Historically, what is real news has been defined by those who have the power and resources to make the news. Though digital media have democratized news production and provided everyday citizens the opportunity to redefine and reshape the news, not all information shared online qualifies as news. While news is information, it is a presentation of information constructed as stories in a language that is specific to journalistic norms and practices and, ultimately, recognizable as news to an audience. Of course, different cultures create and interpret news stories differently, and news media are controlled and organized differently, too, whether they are government-controlled, for-profit, or not-for-profit. But news is generally about current events and issues that affect communities and that news producers and audiences deem newsworthy. On the other hand, a lot of the information shared online is little more than gossip, rumor, conspiracy theories, and fascinating urban myths. And with more and more information circulating online, it's critical for citizen-produced community journalism to stand up and stand out in the crowd. Like professional journalism, community journalism should be competent, rigorous, thoughtful, and ethical. Your audience should recognize your stories as news and not just information. But there is no unified set of community journalism practices. Community journalism will be different across cultures and across communities, and it is more valuable because of that. While some community journalists are ordinary citizens who document extraordinary events, or semi-professionals working to fill in the gaps of professional news coverage, community journalism should aim to contribute to the building of community and to social change. Community journalism should also challenge traditional mainstream news practices and representations. Representations of reality Trust in news media is decreasing as many citizens feel that news media are not living up to their important role in sustaining democracy. Perceived bias in news and audience confirmation bias play a major role in this growing skepticism, especially as traditional news sources become more consolidated and newsfeed algorithms reinforce the customized preferences of each internet user rather than a broad range of news sources. Another reason many citizens distrust traditional mainstream news is that they no longer see their experiences and concerns reflected in the news. For many communities, mainstream news coverage either neglects their experiences or distorts them. Sometimes the communities are even overrepresented when it comes to certain issues like violent crime. For underrepresented communities, this lack of visibility and misrepresentation in the news is systemic. Traditional news media place boundaries on the kinds of stories considered news, who gets to tell those stories, and how those stories are investigated and presented. Community journalism should challenge these practices by seeking out the stories that are overlooked by and missing from the mainstream news coverage. Community news stories should be grounded in issues of concern to the community and told from the perspective of community members. While traditional news stories often feature the voices of outside experts, community journalism should seek out and elevate the voices of ordinary people as experts in their own lives and experiences. News stories are a representation of reality, and those representations affect how you view yourself, your community, and your concerns. Within any community, however, you will find many different realities, some convergent and some in conflict. The purpose of community journalism is to reflect these multiple realities through responsible and reflexive practices 
and to foster community engagement through dialogue and participation. Community journalism that prioritizes community concerns and the contributions of community members in the selection and presentation of news stories has the potential to contribute to a local public sphere that is empowering, participatory, and representative. Constructing community. Community journalism is intimate, caring, and personal. It reflects the community and tells its stories, and it embraces a leadership role. Community is often defined as a location, but communities are not always bound by geography, especially in the context of digital media. More importantly, communities are constructed through shared meaning. Community news stories contribute to shared meaning making giving community journalists significant responsibility in the construction of community. Communities need to tell stories about themselves in order to make meaning of their shared experiences, and all citizens within a community have a role to play in this symbolic practice. If citizens don't tell their own stories, then someone else will. Thus, it is important for community journalists to be citizens first and journalists second, and for all citizens to have access to community journalism as both audience and contributors. In this way, community journalism disrupts traditional top-down power structures, constructing power from the bottom up in the form of community and through stories and engaged citizenship. Community news stories should focus on individuals while also reflecting the greater community. They should be inclusive, and they should highlight stories and experiences that traditional news media overlook or misrepresent. Community news stories should include contributions from ordinary citizens as both producers and experts. And they should serve the common good by creating informed, active, and empowered public spheres built on shared meaning and civic engagement. So, start by talking with people in your community. This can be at an event or in a public space or through social media. Find out what issues are important to them that don't get enough attention or that they feel traditional news coverage has gotten wrong. Decide what the best way to tell this story would be. Print, audio, video, multimedia. Think about the story you want to tell, the kinds of information you'll need to collect, and how it will best reach your audience. Then, using social media, your cell phone, and other resources, start collecting stories and conducting interviews with people in your community. Fill in the gaps by doing some research around the issue online and in your local library and office of public records. You can also consult local experts who might have more information. And then collect some more stories and interviews from people you haven't heard from and do more research. Recruit and train members of the community to support the work of community journalism. Once you feel like everyone in the community who wants to or needs to contribute to the story has had the opportunity to contribute, then you can start shaping all that information into a news story. Avoid traditional media narratives like us versus them or humans versus nature. Don't manufacture conflict and drama. This story is from your community and for your community, so you don't need to sell the story to your audience. When you share your story, allow and encourage other community members to add to the story, to critique the story, or to create their own new stories that explore different angles or perspectives on your story. When members of a community look into their own neighborhoods, at the people around them to tell their own stories, their voices become amplified. They are seen and heard in ways that can bring understanding, tolerance, and positive change. For more on this course and to access related resources, visit our website.